Hi folks, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can convert DC current into alternating current and today we are going to do it completely analogically, which is a great thing because we can understand and learn new things together and we are going to build it like MacGyver will build it. So let's start my first intro. We start to have electricity in our cities starting from 1900. So at the beginning, the, the electricity was direct current, for example, like this battery, which means we have one pole that is always negative and one pole that is always positive, and they bring electricity to the lights or to all the appliances we have at home. This is great, but we have a downside about this kind of DC current, which is the thickness of the cables. They have to be very thick and they don't have to be too long. Otherwise, the current that passes inside the cable dies and there's no more electricity that flows into the cable. The cable itself works like a resistance, a resistor, and it drops the current from the battery and it's not very, very efficient. Until Nikola Tesla started to promote and demonstrate the power of alternative current, which solved the problem about very thick cables. And if you think about it, we can push and bring alternate current on top of our cities inside very thin cables at a very, very long distance. So this is a very great thing. And the second great thing is that with alternate current, you can play and mess up with voltage without problems. For example, you can start from very, very high power cable, like 3000 volts, and step it down using a very simple and cheap transformer down to five volts. Or you can instead take five volts and bring them up to 220. So a little transformer like this one is capable to do like magic things. And today I'm planning to build my own transformer and driver so they can have like an inverter. And today we're going to build it completely analogic, analogically. So, so this little transformer is like magic. And today we are going to build all, all things around it that are completely analogically and can control it without problems. So let's start. You already recognize this, this it turns on as soon the electricity from the house or the office turns off. So this allows us to continue to save the work at the computer or continue to use anything that is connected here on the back even if there is no electricity in the house. So this unfortunately stay under the rain for a couple months so everything is broken inside but there's a little treasure, something that I want to recycle for this project, something very useful. Let's see what it is. Usually in this kind of inverter you always have something that is digital, so you need to have like a processor that gives little impulse to transistor. Transistor works like relay that close very fast. So basically we have two polarity that flows on two different cables and all the transistor or switches or relay then can switch polarity in this rhythm. So we have a couple of switch that open and a couple of them close. So I can replicate the same thing, but I don't want to use transistor, but I want to use very simple and very cheap little switch. So you can understand also how everything works, adding a little transformer, we can boost up the voltage from 12 volts up to 220 volts. So that's the goal. The, the plan of today is to use very little switch that I bought on Amazon, are this one. And the first thing I need to do is take the right measurement of all components because I have to replicate all the, all the position of them on top of a PCB. So let's take the measurements, first of all. And now that I have all the dimensions of the components, I can just draw here on the computer the circuit board I really need. So uh, every, everything has to be perfectly aligned and I'm also adding little holes to mount some screws and uh, later you will understand the reason why. And now to produce the parts, I'm going to use a website, a service that is great. I'm talking about PCBWay, which is also the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay is a website, you just have to upload your 3D file or your circuit board file 
and you can see and choose all the parameters of your, your project and you're also going to see how much you're going to spend and the days you will receive the packet, which is great. You can also choose if you want to 3D print an object, if you can choose different materials and or maybe if you want to have a metal part, a replacement part or something for a new prototype, you can just upload it and choose if you want to work it with a CNC or with a lathe, which is great. So now let's upload everything and order it and see how much time it takes. It was so fast, only one week and I already have in my hands the package that contains all the circuit board I need. I decided to print more than one, maybe just because I want to upgrade and give more power, more juice to this inverter. So what I have to do now is just start to weld all the components and this is the moment of truth. So let's see if I take all the measurements correctly and if the components fit inside the PCB I just designed. And fortunately, I was so lucky that all the parts fit perfectly. Now I just have to add some solder and solder all the parts in place. I, I put a lot of solder in place because a lot of ampere will pass inside this circuit and so everything is working great. Now I can cut with my laser engraver these that are little wood base where a little brass part can go inside. I'm taking inspiration from engine car motor so this is the part where the crankshaft will spin on top, so you already understand the plan. I can <laughs> fix in place the wood part using some wood screw and now take a stainless steel pin and pass it inside. This can spin and push the little switch in the right order. I can push the switch using like cam that I just cut in wood. I cut eight of them and I can then insert them inside the stainless steel. I was so precise that was a pressure fit, but it's also a very great idea to add some super glue to keep all the parts in place. This is so important because the position of this cam uh, depends the opening and closing of the switch. So everything has to be precise and I glue everything taking all the time I need. So to, the, to understand the position of all the cam and the push switch, I can take inspiration from the previous animation. So you can see that I have to alternate and close one switch and another. And this is basically what I need. So as you can see, it works great. I can push two switch and open other two. And this continue on over and over <laughs> indefinitely. I can motorize all the system. So I, I took a vinyl disc and cut it. So I make a very huge pulley and I can take a 12 volt motor and this can be installed using a little belt. Of course, the more faster I let this motor spin and the higher hertz and frequency I get from the output of this inverter. So this is a very clever mechanism. The faster it spins, the higher the frequency it is. That's nice. So let's see if everything works as was planned. You can see that everything is spinning, but I need to give power wow. to this motor. Finally, we have everything ready. This is an analogic system that can convert DC current from a regular battery and convert it into AC, much more useful for our needs. So I just have to push power into this big motor. In this case, I don't want to have maximum power. This usually goes at 12 volts. I'm going to connect it at only 5 volts, so it will spin slower, but it's just what we need. So let's see how it performs. So let's turn it on. It looks really amazing. Basically, we have something analogically that usually is made completely digitally. We have usually processor and transistor capable to transform C from a car battery into AC, which is what we need for today's project. And of course, I need a 12 volt battery and a huge transformer I took apart earlier. So the little motor will make the trick. 12 volt goes into the transformer and boost it up and step it up to 220 volts. So finally, everything is perfectly working. We have more than 200 volts from the output. Consider that the sine wave of the AC current produced from this transformer isn't round 
waves, but these perfectly square waves. So to consider that also we don't have a life protection system. So if I touch both wires together, I can hurt myself very, very badly. So it's something I have to keep in mind. And also the original product can have and understand the power output consumption and regulate the power suction from the battery. In this case, there's no electronics, so it's always sucking power from the battery as more power you can get. So this can dry the battery very quickly, but no problem, I solved the problem just redesigning this part. You probably already recognize it was the output coming from the original system. So we have multiple plugs and I rearrange them in this way. So I laser cut this little panel. So let me take away these plugs. This goes here in the front and you can clearly see that everything now have a function. So in this box here, I can place two plugs so that we have 220 volts. So I have as well, these that are four connections for connecting solar panels. I have 12 volt output, but the most important thing is that we have 12 volt input. So they can always keep all the system fully functional, just connecting to the car battery or to the car lighter. So this solve all, all my problems. That's great. So to control the power charge of the solar panels, I can use this little circuit board. It's very cheap and you just have to connect the solar panel and that's, that's gonna do all the job. So I can then hide all these parts inside the metal container that came originally. And you can see that I cut everything that can slide perfectly inside. That's a bonus. So that's great. And so finally it's ready and it looks amazing. Something that you can buy in the shop. Now I just have to plug in the solar panels. I have four plugs, so I can connect four of them, but this is more than enough for this little battery that I have inside. Consider that I have multiple plugs, so I can, I can connect it, of course, to a car battery or directly inside the vehicle, so I don't need the solar panel all the time. So to, I can turn on everything and this will start to produce alternate current. So let's turn it on. <laughs> wow, it's perfectly working. It takes some time to catch the right IPM. And this is a problem about frequency, but overall it works great. Consider that this will be a very handy project to have when I go camping this summer. So I already bought an air mattress. I can use this to pump the mattress and I can also use it to light up all the campsites. So no problem with this little invention. So this is a very simple project and I really want to thank a lot PCB Way that sent me all the little circuit board I need for this project, more than one, so probably I can just boost the ampere of this project, adding more little switches and more circuit board like this. So I leave you all the links here below in the bottom info so you can see how much it costs to print a circuit board and all the other service PCB Way offers you. So check it out and at this point, I leave you here my two previous projects. Check them out and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao!